Now this is an amazing dish. We're going to break it down to three bits. We're going to have gammon, which is absolutely gorgeous. We've already uh, roasted that in the oven. Um, it depends on how big your gammon is, uh, how you're going to roast it. We've roasted it in one go, the whole thing, uh, even though there's four portions, four meals in that, because we're going to prepare them all today. If at home you were just going to uh, do a meal for one and you're not a big fan of storing things, although we recommend batch cooking, storing is makes more convenient meals. Um, but if you're not a fan, then you just cut it into four and just roast the one bit. But we've roasted it all in one go because we're going to film actually four different recipes uh, during the next couple of days. But this one, Emma, is doing something very special in the kitchen over there uh, with Brussels and blueberries, which I've never heard of together. And if you followed me before, my cookbooks and things, I can find lots of ways of cooking uh, Brussels sprouts. But Emma, this is an absolute new one on me. Yeah, so it's a little bit different, but you've got lots of different flavours going on. Um, we're just chopping our Brussels sprouts in half. I'm going to add them to a hot pan. So I've got olive oil in my pan. And I'm just going to grab myself a spoon. And you're literally just going to fry those off. And then we've also got blueberries. These are actually frozen blueberries, so you just want them to thaw out for a little bit before you use them, but it doesn't really matter. They're going to cook through even if they're frozen. Um, and then we've got some toasted, toasted nuts and some sea salt. Now, if your Brussels sprouts are taking a little bit longer to cook, because, you know, they are, they're quite big um, and there's obviously, it's going to take a little bit of extra time, you can add a little bit of water just to cook them through more quickly. The, Blueberries are going to go in right at the end because you don't want your Brussels sprouts to turn completely purple um, and neither your nuts. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fry off my Brussels sprouts, add in my nuts, toast them into the mixture a little bit and then finally add in the blueberries at the end. Um, and then as you go, you can add in a little bit of sea salt. And when it comes to blueberries, uh, you can buy them fresh, you can buy them frozen. I personally always go frozen because it locks in the goodness. You see, when they freeze it, most times, in most good farms, when it comes you know, out the ground, they put it into the freezer literally that same day, so all the goodness gets locked in. Don't believe anybody that says you shouldn't buy frozen fruit. For me, I think it's A, most affordable, most convenient, because you've always got it in the fridge, so when you're looking to cook something different, you haven't got, oh, I've got to go and remember to get the blueberries, because you've already got them in there. And Because uh, I would never have thought of putting blueberries with sprouts, and then you'll go through Emma's cookbook and you go, oh, blueberries and sprouts, oh, I've got those, I could do that right now. Yeah, I mean, I think the sweet combination, the combination of the sweet of the blueberries um, with the, the savoury taste of the Brussels sprouts, and so many people hate Brussels sprouts, and you know, growing up, like, my mother used to make Brussels sprouts, but they were, they were boiled, Yeah. and they just had no, well, they, I mean, they, they were overpowering with flavour, they yeah. just were, they were just quite... I just didn't grow up loving sprouts, and yeah. then suddenly, as I you know, as I got older and as I started to cook for myself, I just started experimenting with different flavors. Yep. And this really does go. Yep. And you know, you uh, talk about your the crunch and the sweet. Oh yeah, I was just about to say that. You know, if you've watched any of my programs before, I love cooking sprouts. And here's a tip: if you overcook them and they get a bit soft, add something crunchy on top, like nuts because then you've got that dynamic contrast. The brain gets wired, the dopamine rushes if you have something crunchy and soft. If you undercook it and you go, not oh, a bit crunchy, but I quite like that, then put something soft on top, melt a bit of cheese on top. So again, you've got the softness of the cheese, you've got the crunchiness uh, of, of the sprout. So look for that dynamic contrast all the time. In fact, you're doing that in many ways here. You've got the dynamic contrast, the or also known, by the way, of Oreo sensory, uh, as coined by uh, Professor Stephen Whitley. But what you've got here, you've got the crunchiness of the nuts, you'll have the, maybe the medium to soft of, 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 of the Brussels sprouts. Then you'll have the contrast of sweet and sour. Oh, it's just got everything going on, Emma. It should be delicious once it's cooked through. Um, and then once, you're, once the nuts have been toasted a little bit and they've gone a little bit brown, your Brussels sprouts have softened. We don't want them to completely turn yeah. to, you know, too soft. Yep. Um, and then we're just going to add in the blueberries. Yep. I talked a moment ago about blueberries being frozen. The value, and I don't know why this is the case, even in season, when they put the sprouts in those small bags and they're fresh, they're really expensive. Go in the freezer aisle, a whole kilo is so, so cheap. I mean, it's, we've taken these from frozen. It's by far the cheapest way of doing it. If you know you're cooking it in the evening, just get some out in the morning, 
put them in the fridge, a bit of planning, uh, and, and away you go. Could you cut them from frozen if you had a bit more patience? Add a little bit of water. Okay. Add a little bit of water, yep. let them steam through, and yep. then take the water out and pop them, pop them straight on the hob. Great advice. Well, they're starting to look fantastic. Come on, when do we put those blueberries in? Well, let's add them in now. Oh, good, I was glad you said that. And these we are cooking straight from frozen. So, uh, well, I say from frozen, been in water for about five or six minutes. But, uh, wow, look at the colours. Isn't that fantastic? So you're just going to move them around. Don't, don't muddy, muddy up your colours too much. Okay. You don't like your nuts going I don't want them to be purple, no. <laughs> so again, that's the benefit of using a big pan, isn't it? You've got room to cook it all in one pan, but not everything taking on the colours yeah, of everything exact, else. Yeah, exactly. But it's I think they're almost ready to be plated up. They look fantastic. So we're going to plate those up for you in a moment. I'm sure you'll love this as a side dish or as part of another dish. Right, we're going to plate those up. Uh, the gammon's been... Uh, in the oven that's already uh, cooked. What we now need to do, go and do is prepare a very special mash. One of the reasons we love to use cauliflower as a mash, you've seen us probably do many rice recipes with it, yeah. is that compare it to the big baked potato. Now a big baked potato, let's say you're gonna make a mash, you're gonna use at least what, one big baked potato? Well a big bit of baked potato, as we were saying in other programs, turns into a big amount of sugar in the body, like as much sugar, one big baked potato, as in two cans of Coca-Cola. Oh. And people say to me, well, it must be different types of sugar. No, it's not. It's sugar is sugar. And if you're a type 1 diabetic, or you're trying to beat obesity, or reverse diabetes, or just get healthy, the big potatoes have got to go. Now, we've done celeriac mash before, which yeah. was pretty cool. Uh, this is slightly different. This has a little bit more carbs than your celeriac but it's still one fifth. So you could have five of those for one baked potato, big baked potato. Uh, but in here, you've also got the addition of vitamin C, vitamin B, just get my notes, six, vitamin K, potassium, magnesium, manganese, folate. I mean, the list goes on and on. So super, super healthy. So tell us about how you're gonna do your cauliflower mash. Well, we're literally, we're just gonna cut up our cauliflower. We're gonna use all of it. We're gonna use the stalk, everything. Yeah. Um, and if you want, you can use obviously use your leaves. If you've got if you've got a blender yeah. to blend it up afterwards, yeah. I would always say add in your leaves. Yeah. If you're just going to mash it with a fork or with um, a potato masher, yeah. then just pop it straight in, just the florets and the stalk, and you're just going to to boil it until it's soft. Do you know what I love about spending time with you? Not only not only you're great fun, yeah. but I've just increased my savings at home because I always take the stalk out. No, why? That goes in the mash? Yeah. Okay, that's fantastic. And you know what? The stalk's always a little bit sweeter as well, so it kind of adds, adds another depth of flavour to, to the cauliflower mash. That's fantastic. Well, we'll let that boil, and then we'll come back, and we'll show you how we mash it up. So we've boiled the cauliflower rice, um, all chunked up. Love the fact that Emma uses the entire stalk and everything. Then we're going to start to mash it up. Three ways to mash it up, dead simple. You can use a fork if you've got a masher. Not only a couple of pan, get one of those. Or what I use at home, just because I like doing anything really quick and convenient and easy, I've just got a blender, I stick it all in the blender, and away we go. Um, the golden rule in my house is I just use butter yeah. as the standard, but then depending on what the dish is, I might add the cream, I might add cheese, I might add garlic, I might put all of it in. I, well, yes, you could do. I think um, adding a little bit of double cream, really, it just... It just makes it like a really creamy mashed potato. Yeah. Or you can keep it quite rough. You can just add a little bit of butter, a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. Yeah. Um, hard cheese, things like Parmesan go beautifully with it. Um, but I, I think cauliflower mash out of, out of celeriac mash or cauliflower mash, I actually think I prefer cauliflower mash. Do well, you? Well, you would, I know you're going to say celeriac. I am going to say celeriac. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, again, in our family, different people love different things. So uh, some like the celeriac. And sometimes I'll leave it like you've got their really coarse mash, especially if I'm trying to make it look a bit like restaurant yeah. and so on. My kids don't like it all like lumpy. They like it all sort of nice and soft and blended. And that's what I'm going to ask you to do now. Keep going till it's really blended. But you can even just leave it like that and have it rough. Have it, yeah, rustic. 
So for this uh, dish, we've just left it. We haven't put the cheese in, we haven't put the cream in. This literally is just cauliflower and butter because that's what we wanted for this dish, but feel free to add more to other dishes. Let's sprout up, I was going to say then. <laughs> Let's plant <laughs> up uh, this gorgeous, gorgeous side dish. Wow, the colours are fabulous. Oh, it smells great too. So this could be a side dish with gammon, yep. with chicken, with beef. Fish. With fi I mean, literally anything, couldn't it? Because we've got full of goodness. We've got dynamic contrast. We've got vitamins, we've got minerals, we've got antioxidants. And we've got very, very, very few carbohydrates. Right. So, by the way, I think we've done enough mash for about an army here. <laughs> but, uh, again, the value of this is in incredible. Don't forget, if the price has changed, you can always click on the link above and get the updated prices. Also, any tips we've got um, and any photos of you know, what you cook at home, we'll try and put up there as well. So what do we say in this? About a third? Oh, yeah, I th I th maximum, I would say. Maximum. What would you, I mean? Well, let's go there. Let's go like that. Oh, so you, oh yes, <laughs> maximum a third. But we'll go with that. That's what we've priced up. How, yeah. you, how are you going to serve it? Are you going to serve it as one bit or are you going to slice I it? I think I'm just going to slice it so that you've... Oh, look, that crispy little bit on the top. I love that. That looks great, Em. What a value meal. The salt will taste great. That dynamic contrast of the, the sweetness, the saltiness going on, the brain, the, the, the dopamine receptors in the brain are absolutely going to light up here. Very, very, very low in carbohydrates, totally full of nutrition. And if you cook that gammon first, the rest of it has taken very little time indeed. And especially if you do what we do, and maybe once a, on a weekend you do all your preparation, so all the mash is done, all your, your rice is done, your cauliflower rice, your cauliflower mash, your celeriac mashes, get them all in the freezer or the fridge, bring them out, it makes this a cinch. Exactly, and I mean you could add anything you want for the top, you could make a little dressing, um, just to add a little bit of extra. Yeah. Um, but I think that's perfect. That looks absolutely wonderful. Well done indeed. Can't wait <laughs> to dive into this one. Wow.